Ladies and gentlemen, non-binary, gender fluid, and everybody else in between, welcome to Box Office Battles. A show where we pit two similar movies together, head-to-head, one-on-one, baby, and see who comes out on top. Today's episode, Parody vs. Parody, Galaxy Quest vs. Spaceballs. Let's get into it. The classic battle in the space genre has always been Star Trek vs. Star Wars, so I thought it would be fun to pit the Star Trek parody film, Galaxy Quest, vs. the Star Wars parody film, Spaceballs. Galaxy Quest releasing in 1999, and Spaceballs releasing in 1987. Undoubtedly, two cult classics that are both universally beloved and cherished. In this fight, we have three rounds. The first round is plot. We're going to analyze the catalyst of the story and how it flows. The second round will be of the players. Who makes up the stories and who the villains are? The final bloody round will be of audience reception, box office numbers, and legacy. A great way to end the fight. Stay tuned. I even asked some of my creator friends what they think of both movies. All right, let's get into it. Starting with Galaxy Quest, the story is a fun, interesting take of the cliches of space movies, and it's very meta, and I dig that. The story is unlike any movie I've ever seen, so it gets major points for that. The plot is as followed. We see the cast of an old space adventure show that's clearly this world's version of Star Trek, nicely titled Galaxy Quest. They seem to spend their days doing fan convention appearances and autograph signings. It's clear that the show's former star, Jason Nesmith, really digs all the attention he gets from all the appearances. And all the other former actors of the show resent him for it, mostly because he gets the majority of the attention. It's also shown that Jason lives in a beautiful big house, and all the other stars are living mediocre lives. At a convention, Jason is approached by the Thermians, a group of actual aliens who request his help, and Jason thinks they're just role-playing, and they want him for a convention appearance. He agrees, and the next morning they pick him up, and Jason is quite hungover, so he doesn't pick up that they're actual aliens. They transport him to a replica of the ship from Galaxy Quest. He confronts the enemy of the aliens, Ceres, who demands the Omega-13, a secret super weapon mentioned in the show's final episode. Of course, in this world, the show is fiction. We know that. But both races of aliens think it's actually real. You see the predicament here. Jason says to attack Ceres and literally walks off, only to get blasted back to Earth and then finally realizes what he just went through. He then tries to convince the rest of the cast that what he just lived through was real. And good timing! The aliens show up again requesting his help. The cast weirdly thinks it's another job, and they all join him. On board the ship, the team learns that the aliens have no concept of fiction, and believe the show was actually just historical records of the planet. Ceres, the evil enemy, returns and attacks the ship, and of course, all the humans freak out. I mean, I would too. The ship ends up severely damaged, and they all make it to a nearby planet to retrieve some fuel for the dying ship. They find fuel on this planet and steal it from these small little aliens, unrelated to the other two races of aliens. I know you're following. When they get back to the ship, they realize that Ceres has taken control of the ship, demanding the Omega-13 weapon. Ceres forces Jason to admit that he's not a real commander to the alien crew, and then activates the self-destruct button and heads back to his ship, leaving everybody to die. The humans get a plan going to deactivate the explosion and defeat Ceres' troops still on board. And you will never guess how they did this. Jason communicates with a Galaxy Quest superfan all the way back on Earth via a radio because this superfan has a wild amount of knowledge of the crew and the ship. I don't know either. The crew gets walked through the abort process and the ship is saved. Yay! With a new level of confidence, the crew challenges Saris' ship inside a magnetic minefield and actually destroys it. They get closer to Earth, and we find out that Ceres escaped the explosion and ambushes the team, and fatally wounds several crew members. Jason activates the infamous Omega-13 weapon, which creates a 13-second time warp to the past, giving Jason the chance to disarm Ceres before he attacks. The ship lands safely on Earth, conveniently at a Galaxy Quest convention. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure it did. The crew leaves the ship to find cheers from hundreds of fans, and we end our story finding out that Galaxy Quest is revived as a sequel series, just like Star Trek did. 
Wow, what a story, man. Like I said, Galaxy Quest gets major points from old Joey C for the unique factor of it. Let's move on to Spaceballs. Directed by Mel Brooks, everybody knew this was going to be a masterpiece. The guy's the man. He made Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein, just to name a few. My producer is looking at me off screen in a very (laughs) disappointing look. (laughs) He doesn't like Mel Brooks. It's a great spoof on Star Wars and actually feels like if Star Wars was a goofy comedy. We see Planet Spaceballs has used up all of its precious air. And President Scroob has a plan to steal the atmosphere from the neighboring planet Juidia by forcing its ruler, King Roland, to give him the code to the atmosphere. While this is happening, we see Princess Vespa in the middle of an arranged marriage ceremony, and she decides to flee with her droid, stealing a ship and flying off. King Roland contracts Lone Star and his half-man, half-dog, Barf, to rescue Vespa for a large sum of money, because they owe money to a crime boss, Pizza the Hut. The duo rescue Vespa and Dot Matrix from being captured by Spaceball One, the ship trying to use Vespa as ransom for the combination for their atmosphere. As the two ships are racing through space, Lone Star's ship runs out of fuel, and they have to make a crash landing on a desert moon. The four heroes travel on foot before passing out, and being found by the Dinks, the Jawas from Star Wars in this world. They are taken to the safe haven of Yogurt, where Lone Star learns about the power of the Schwartz. Dark Helmet from Spaceballs 1 shows up and kidnaps Vespa and Dot, which leads Yogurt to give Lone Star the Ring of the Schwartz, so he can use the power of the Schwartz. Dark Helmet uses Vespa as extortion against King Roland, threatening to reverse her plastic surgery if he doesn't give him the code to the air. Lone Star and Barf aboard the ship, and rescue Vespa and Dot. Unfortunately for them, Spaceballs 1 is already sucking the air out of Vespa's home planet. Lone Star then uses the power of the Schwartz to reverse the sucking, and they aboard the ship again to find a way to destroy it. Lone Star finds a self-destruct button because, fuck man, there's always one. The button gets activated, and Lone Star and co. escape the exploding ship, sending the crew of Spaceball 1 to land on a planet inhabited by talking apes. Vespa and Dot return to their home planet, and Lone Star and Bar fly off into the universe, man, until Lone Star finds out that he's actually a prince from another planet, man, and then he races back to planet Druidia to marry Princess Vespa, and they live happily ever after. Wow. What a story, man. Let's get into the results. Who won this round? Who won round one? Well, comparing the two is tough because they're both completely different stories. I do think the jokes in Spaceballs are much more funny, with Galaxy Quest trying to be a bit more of a serious story with elements of a comedy. Galaxy Quest seems to only spoof the specifics of Star Trek, as it's loaded with references. But, but, Spaceballs seems to be more liberal with their spoofing. Spaceballs didn't just stick with Star Wars, spoofing all types of sci-fi tropes, even spoofing other classic sci-fi movies like Alien, Planet of the Apes, Transformers, and Star Trek. Now, Galaxy Quest has a script that feels more balanced between plot, characters, and situations, but, but, because of that, a lot of the jokes feel pretty predictable. With that being said, and this is my hot take... In terms of plot, Galaxy Quest for me wins specifically for the reason of how unique the story is. I know, I know, I know, you're probably angry with me at this moment in time, but we have two more rounds of this, so let's get into the second round. The second round of this brutal battle is the players. Running the ship on Spaceballs, we have Lone Star, played by Bill Pullman, who you might recognize as Dr. Harvey from Casper. Accompanied by his sidekick, Barf, played by Uncle Buck himself, John Candy. Rest in peace. Of course, these two rescue Princess Vespa, played by Daphne Zuniga, and her droid, Dot Matrix, voiced by the wild and crazy Joan Rivers. Rest in peace. The villains of the movie would be Dark Helmet, played by Keymaster himself, Rick Moranis. The ruler of Planet Spaceballs, President Scroob, is played by the legendary director himself, Mel Brooks. There's many more, but we'll stick to the main players. The chemistry between them is unmatched. Plus, individually, they are all hysterical. They don't have to rely on each other to set up jokes. John Candy is at his best. Rick Moranis steals the show, and Bill Pullman is an incredible frontman. 
Moving on to Galaxy Quest, running the ship on Galaxy Quest, we see Jason Nesmith, played by Tim Allen. We got the man himself, Alan Rickman, playing Sir Alexander Dane. We see the femme fatale, Sigourney Weaver, playing the beautiful Gwen. Dwight from The Office, Rain Wilson, playing the alien Lonk. The leader of the aliens is Mathisar, played by the quirky Enrique Colantoni. The villain, Saris, who has amazing makeup, by the way, is played by the deadly Robin Sachs, who did a surprising number of video game voiceovers. The main players of this space flick seem to be pretty diverse, although there's not a lot of chemistry throughout the movie between them. Admittedly, that may be on purpose, although the main villain, Saris, is pretty badass. He doesn't show up nearly as much as Dark Helmet does in Spaceballs, though. The cast of Spaceballs seems to be more of a better combination of characters that flow nicely with each other, compared to the weirdly placed-together band of Galaxy Quest. That being said, I love the cast of Galaxy Quest, but I think this round is going to have to go to Spaceballs. I think their chemistry works a lot better than Galaxy Quest. So we're going with Spaceballs, baby! (laughs) Ha ha! It's one-to-one, baby! All right, let's take a break and hear from our sponsor. Well, let me tell you, this is a good video so far. We got to talk about today's sponsor. Go to patreon.com slash official Joey C for all your exclusive Joey C needs. We have exclusive live streams, exclusive reviews, exclusive behind the scenes videos, and weekly check-ins, man. And there's even a tier where you can pick a video and I'll do it no questions asked. Within reason, folks, this is the internet. We have guidelines, you know what I'm saying? And I, I have to tell you that. So, folks, go to patreon.com slash official Joey C. I'd love to have you. Back to the video. Here we go, baby. Going into the third and final round, we are tied up, baby. One to one, Spaceballs versus Galaxy Quest. Who will come out on top? I don't know. You'll find out. The final round will take a look at audience reception, box office numbers, and and legacy. Let's start with Galaxy Quest. This 1999 film made about $90.7 million at the box office on a $45 million budget. Not too shabby. I was shocked to learn that it made $7 million on just the opening weekend alone. It's important to know about the audience reception is that it received positive reviews from critics and audiences for both being a Star Trek parody film and a comedy film. So that's major points for Galaxy Quest. Taking a look at Rotten Tomatoes, Galaxy Quest has 90% fresh and a 79% audience rating. That's not too shabby. That's pretty good. It's easy to see why Galaxy Quest is beloved by fans. Moving on to Spaceballs, the 1987 film made $38.1 million at the box office on a $22.7 million budget. So it wasn't nearly as financially successful as Galaxy Quest. But that's not a defeat just yet. It made about $6.6 million on its opening weekend. So once again, not as successful as Galaxy Quest. Let's take a look at the reception from critics and audiences. It actually received mixed reviews from critics, which is kind of shocking because this is such a cult classic film. It's important to know that it seems to me that most of the love for this film came years after when it was released on VHS. Looking at Rotten Tomatoes, we have a 57% score on the tomato meter. Not looking good, man. But we see a higher audience score of 83%, which is higher than Galaxy Quest. I'm shocked to see Spaceballs is rated and remembered not as highly as I thought. All right, before we get into the final results of Galaxy Quest versus Spaceballs on box office battles, baby, I asked a few of my creative friends what they think of both films and which one they like more. Roll the tape. Okay, Galaxy Quest versus Spaceballs. Uh, this is tough. I love both these movies. And I'm here to do what seems like a very impossible task. Uh, three guesses on which side I'm going to come down on in this debate. Uh, you can tell by my massive amount of uh, Star Trek ships behind me that I am a Galaxy Quest fan. Baseballs and Galaxy Quest. Two fantastic movies on their own right, and I somehow found myself in the middle to pick between the two to find which one is better. In fact, even coming on here to tell you which one is better was difficult for me. Comparing Galaxy Quest and Spaceballs and picking which one is best. 
Honestly, worst question ever to ask because you're asking me to choose between Star Trek and Star Wars and you fucking know it. Um, at the same time, though, it really comes down to the meta behind the movies for me. So, like, it's the intent, right? So with that, there's casting, there's individual performances, storyline, overall cohesiveness. Galaxy Quest versus Spaceballs is honestly kind of a mean question. Like, asking me to choose one is like asking me to choose if I prefer chocolate or peanut butter. Both are spectacular, and I can't just decide between the two of them like that. I love both these movies a lot. I've actually covered Galaxy Quest on my show. They both have stat casts. They're both hilarious. I think Galaxy Quest might be better written. Everybody just kind of goes for it in this movie. Uh, it's got a stacked cast. Uh, Alan Rickman is hysterical. Probably one of his funniest performances, definitely since he played the Sheriff of Nottingham. I am a Star Wars fan, and I haven't seen any Star Trek thing, well, maybe besides a couple episodes of Voyager, so you'd figured I'd go with the Star Wars movie. A satire of Star Trek starring Tim Allen. Okay. But here's the thing, you don't watch Galaxy Quest for Tim Allen. You watch it for Alan Rickman. You watch it for Tony Shalhoub. You watch it for Sam Rockwell. You watch it for Sigourney Weaver, if you're me. She is my favorite actress of all time. Mel Brooks, a god, right? Anyone who disagrees should educate themselves. He specializes in spoof and satire. He's always been really good at it. Spaceballs is an obvious spoof on Star Wars with amazing casting through and through. We've got Rick Moranis' Dark Helmet. We've got John Candy as Barf. There are memorable one-liners. It's quotable as hell. It plays on the seriousness of Star Wars without taking itself seriously ever. Spaceballs is a parody. It is taking elements of all these popular sci-fi films from the time and kind of putting it all into one film with some amazing comedic actors. But unfortunately for Spaceballs, it's only real Star Trek connection is that the I ain't seen shit guy is the same guy who plays Tuvok uh, from Star Trek Voyager and other Star Trek shows now. However, I really like a lot of like the jokes and gags in space balls it's the fact of like maybe which one is funnier and to me i think they're both on the on par with each other but i think for me i watched space balls way more than i watched galaxy quest i love rick moranis and i love john candy two great actors but i just don't know what is up with lone star he sounds like he is reading his lines right off the script sometime and you know this is mel brooks so i don't know if that was intentional and if it was then i guess that's pretty funny but i guess if you were to come to me and be like john you have to pick between these two movies and whichever one you don't pick you can never watch again I'm gonna have to pick Galaxy Quest just for the sheer fact that Galaxy Quest is like its own self-contained thing. There's really nothing else like Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest, it's wonderful. That's not to say I don't love Spaceballs too. Uh, Spaceballs is wonderful. I actually think Galaxy Quest is way better than Spaceballs. And when I mean way better, I mean the time of slivers you could have as way better but i assure you if way better could fit it <sighs> if i was stuck on like a desert island and i could only have one of them i think i'm gonna go space balls uh but you win either way really and i'm gonna have to say space balls comes out on top by a small margin star trek I don't want to put Spaceballs down, but I liked Galaxy Quest a bit better, I guess. I don't know. I, so why I like Spaceballs, I have to go with Galaxy Quest. I think I just enjoyed it a bit better. So, yeah, I guess I'm giving the win to Galaxy Quest, which, honestly, I didn't think I was going to do when I set up this camera, but here I am. So overall, I give it a 9 out of 10, and Galaxy Quest is a winner for me. The only movie that deserves a 10 out of 10 is The Princess Bride, and I will not be explaining that. Putting my own personal bias aside, I have to say, I think it absolutely kills me, but I think the winner of the first ever episode of Box Office Battles is, drumroll please, Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest pulled ahead in the plot round. Things got tied up in the players round, and Galaxy came out on top in the legacy round. Like I said, it kills me because personally, I do think Spaceballs is a more funny movie. But there's more to this battle than comedy, dude. I know some people are shocked and awed in this first episode of Box Office Battles. What did you think of Galaxy Quest? 
What did you think of Spaceballs? Let me know in the comments below. And, and hang on a second, let me know what two movies you want me to pit together next because I probably will. We're running out of, running out of content here, folks. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. I greatly appreciate it. Keep your eye out for the next video, episode, movie, live stream. Whatever it is, man. Listen, listen, listen. Zoom in. Cherish the precious moments. Be love and stay dude. I'm out of here. Galaxy Quest 1, baby. Woohoo! Oh, God. Oh, my God. It's my landlord. Hi, sir.